Tommy, are you there? I'm here. How you doing? I'm all right. You're doing all right? I'm doing all right. I'm sweating like a little chubby Englishman. <laughs> you guys going through a heat wave? Yeah, 30 degrees today. And um, we moan when it's cold and we moan when it's hot. Well, you don't have air conditioning over there. It never occurred to you, right? No, it never occurred to me, mate. I'm dripping. I'm dripping. Um, we were just talking with a guy here. He was, he was falsely accused of rape. And uh, I think it's one of the most interesting things about it is not only does he lose his job and uh, all his prospects, but the friends that know he's innocent also split because they go, sorry, I just, I'm not a, a warrior. This isn't worth the hassle to me. And you, as someone standing up to the Islamification of your hometown, you must have a lot of friends and people that you thought you could trust going, sorry, Tommy. I got to peace out. I can't be seen with you. It's not worth the risk. No, not my friends. Really? Not that my friends. Nice. My friends have been there through everything. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if I'm honest, the, the majority of my friends never joined the English Defence League. The majority of my friends don't care about what's happening the way I care about it. Right. The majority, the, my, my friends did get concerned and fearful for their jobs. But if ever I've needed them, they've never shied away from being my friends, publicly being my friends, being photographed as my friends, telling people I'm their friends. Um, no, my friends have always stood there very, very... I wonder if that's because Britain is just an older country, so there's more loyalty and honour, whereas Canada, Canada and America are so new that there's, they're more nomadic, they move more, so there's less sort of roots in the ground. I think, I think a lot of it's because where we come from, with a lot of my friends, it's a working class town. Everyone, everyone knows what the situation is. So right. with my core group of friends, they won't be frowned upon for being my friends. If they were working in London or in posher areas or wealthy areas, um, it may affect their jobs or their positions. But where I come from and the sort of trades and businesses they'd be involved in, it's fine. Wow. Because walking down the street with you, you pretty much know you're going to get into a fight. Look, if, if I go out with my friends, if I go to the toilet, if I go to the toilet when I'm out, I don't even have to say anything, and my friends would get up and follow. Oh my That's gosh. where we're at six years on. That just gave me a dude boner. <laughs> if, if, I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I if I if I if I left the nightclub, if I left being out on my own, I would never be able to because my friends would automatically know if we're out, watch him. Something. Because there's always everyone's waiting for something might happen, something might be said. So yeah, my friends have, um, my friends know the score. And for a lot of them, it was it's not their battle. It hasn't been their battle. Right. Because, yeah, because they, they they don't have the belief that I have or the passion that I have about it. Well, yeah. people are are not innately political. It's kind of an esoteric thing to be into. It's sort of like comedy. Everyone enjoys a laugh, but as far as getting into the the works of comedy, it's only about five to ten percent of the population. But that's it, my friends don't care. Um, so, so a lot of them care when these things are happening, but they don't have the drive to want to go out and tackle Go out and tackle it. Sorry. Oh, fuck, I got worried there that you had been attacked. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Now, um, Nice. Nice was a while ago at this point. But when I saw it, I went to Paris after Bataclan, and I expected something. I expected some sort of an animosity, any kind of Islamophobia. What I got was, if anyone was involved with this, it was Jews. That's what I got from the Arabs in the north, in the northern Paris. And then from the whites, I got a hold, don't get it twisted, don't get it mixed up. And then you go, well... I'm not getting it mixed up. They said Aluha Akbar. Now we're finding out, by the way, at Bataclan, these guys had their balls cut off and stuffed in their mouth. They were disemboweled. They were slitting stomachs, filming it, disfiguring people. And they see it as a random train wreck. And then Nice happens, and we're seeing more of the fucking same. These vigils, these flowers, these platitudes. Will they ever wake up? It's, what we have to understand is that Europe's gone through a process of real brainwashing within our education system. For example, when I went to the Euros, I was in France. I met some young German lads, actually, the lads who are in my photo of the, the fuck ISIS flag that I'm getting. Oh, yeah, bossy. yeah. Those German lads. And when I started talking to them about Angela Merkel, and then I started talking to them about Islam, one of them instantly reacted to me, and he was a normal, seemed like a normal lad. He instantly reacted, the most peaceful religion of all of them is Islam. And then I said, 
I, I started laughing my head off. I nearly, nearly dropped my beer. And I said, you base that on what? So, so you've read the Quran? No. You know about Muhammad? No. What do you know? How have you just automatically dived in this pub? You jumped to the fence to tell me that it's not peaceful, but it's the most peaceful of all the religions. That's your automatic response. And that comes from, that, that comes from the, I've given my daughter as an example at her school. When, when, when she walked past, when she come home when she was five, and she said, Daddy, do you know a mosque is an important place where people pray? When she was five, yeah? when she was seven, and I'm sitting reading a book, the, bio, the biography of Muhammad, I'm preparing for a debate, and she walks past and says, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah? And I stopped her and said, what did you just say to me? I don't have a time. I said, what did you just say to me? She said, you have to say, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Where have you been told that? At school. This is when she was seven. When we went to look at a different school, when there, there was a process that all the children had to put the religious house of worship with the religion. And I'm just standing back watching as, as the kids are trying to do this, as they're looking around the school. It was one of the, the things. All of the children, they could do Christianity, of course, and the only other one they could do was Islam. Now, so when you say, why are people doing this? You have to understand that we've, we've gone through a process after the last 15, 20 years, 30 years probably, since the UN decided, I think, across Europe that we are telling our children this we are brainwashing them so these automatic they're not they're not responses of they're, they're responses of what people have been brain fed it, for example jihad jihad is being taught in our schools in our education system now as, as an inner struggle as an inner wow. struggle that, that, that these words are being so yeah there's there's a whole massive reason for it but it's weak it's pathetic it's going to go the other way. It's going to hugely swing the other way. It's already starting to, but I keep asking myself, what will it take, what will it take? It's going to take a hell of a lot more murders, a hell of a lot more blood, a hell of, hell of, a, hell of a lot more nightmares and death before Europe sees an uprising. But there has to be. Eventually, there has to come. And we don't want war. I don't want war. Everything we've tried to do is to prevent war. No one wants a civil war. Uh, well, we're going there. Slow down. Not no one wants a war. Some people wouldn't mind watching these fuckers blow up some people named me yeah uh, yeah well that's it that's it and me i'll second you on that i'll happily i'll, I'll gladly blow them up um so we need we need if there's going to be civil conflict which there is it's inevitably it's an outcome i think two days before that nice attack the the, the french government the french government were being warned by their military that the country's on the brink of civil war that the cut that, that they can't control what's happening yeah now, what everyone keeps saying, why France, why France, why France? Well, because France has got more Muslims than any other country yeah. in Europe. That's yeah. why. It's a numbers game. Right. And, um, and you're, you're going to see more, you're going to see the most attacks in Pakistan and India, not because of Pakistan and India's foreign policies, but because they've got the most Muslims. It's a numbers game. It's, it's pure demographical figures. Um, the problem is now, we're just, France, not just France, Belgium, everywhere, is just supposed to sit back and wait for the next one. And that's it. And that's it. We're not going to start saying, right, let's start deporting these lot. Let's start closing this down. Let's actually start doing something to prevent and stop this. We're just going to sit back and continue waiting for the next one and waiting for the next one. And we've got, you've seen 10 children killed, 84 people bl uh, smashed to pieces by a truck. And all we hear at the same is now the media. It, the, I watch French. I had a French. I've got a French friend, and on, on the BBC earlier in France, the, the Muslim woman said, "My my son was killed by a kafar." Yeah, she called the killer a kafar. That that was translated by our, the BBC as a non-Muslim. Uh, my son was killed by a non-Muslim. So everything is is what. But we're isn't that what that word means? That is what a kafar is, isn't it? I thought it that is, was yeah, an but insult. It's a derogatory way of saying yeah. a, a, a non-Muslim. An infidel. So, yeah. Well, in Canada, they talk. They call it a truck attack. A truck well, attack. This is, this is. Yeah. It's like when the twin, the twin towers. That wasn't a plane attack. It wasn't <laughs> planes killed three thousand on September the eleventh. It was it. It was bloodthirsty jihadists in the name of Islam kill three thousand. So true, Tommy. I love checking in with you because over the past few years, you've gone from a a maniacal racist soccer hooligan to the only sane man in the room and you personally have never changed i've just watched the context swirl around you as you go from 
less and less radical and more and more sane, and we realize that you were always right in the first place. That's it, and, and I, I sit, I don't sit comfortably because I'm, I'm, I'm terrified of what's going to happen, but I sit knowing that history is going to judge us all as on our side, all of us, yeah. as the good guys. So. Well, let's check in with you next week where you'll be seen as even more sane. That's it. <laughs> Cheers, man. Thanks, Tommy. See you later, buddy. Does that give you a dude boner, him getting up to go piss and say, all right, Tom, you're right. <laughs>